Hello and welcome. I'm looking at rolling aggregates again today, way back in the mists of time in 2022 in May, apparently on May the 12th. I wrote this blog post uh, about pd.rolling aggregates, and the purpose of that was to replicate in a Lambda function some of the functionality that you can find in the rolling module in the pandas library in Python. And it was somewhat successful, but the function that I produced was a bit of a monster. You can see it here. It was, uh, oh gosh, 45 rows long, 45 lines long. Um, and I wrote it before I had access to vStack and before I had hstack and before I really understood scan, reduce, and map. As a result, I ended up using MakeArray um, with wild abandon and thunks for, for no other reason than I wanted to use thunks. Um, and the result of that is that it was some co somewhat complex and somewhat slow. It does work, and I, I think it was a really interesting exercise, but now uh, in the last few months, uh, the Excel team have released group by and pivot by, and along with that, hidden under the covers, is this thing called uh, ETA reduced functions. So what that lets you do is apply, or use, I should say, native Excel functions as arguments to other functions. Don't know what that means? Doesn't matter. Let me show you. Uh, hopefully it will be interesting. So check that I'm not blocking the function here. So I've got this function here in a module called rolling and the function is called aggregate. So it's rolling.aggregate and it is a curried function. We can tell it's curried because the word lambda appears twice. The first or the outer lambda function has two arguments, x and window. x refers to a vector which will be b2 to b14. Window will be an integer that indicates the count of the number of rows that we want to apply an aggregate function to. That's a bit of a mouthful, but if we're trying to create a rolling sum, we want to sum five rows at a time for each row in the vector. Um, and what we do is we pass the vector and we pass an integer into this outer function and it returns this inner function. And then we can pass into the inner function a function like sum or average or min or some custom lambda function that we've created for some nefarious purpose. So let me show you how it works. And then we can talk through uh, the, the guts of the function, which are really not that complicated. So first of all, uh, rolling.aggregate and x is that range. Window, I'm going to use five. And then I open another set of parentheses to pass the function into the lambda function that is returned by the first lambda function. Does that make sense? I don't know. Uh, so let's put sum. And that creates a rolling sum. For the first four rows, there is there aren't enough rows to create a valid window of five rows long. So the function just returns NA for those. For the fifth row, that's the first valid window with five rows, and it sums these five rows. You can see the sum down on the status bar there, 347, and 347 is returned here. The next five rows, the sum on the status bar is 373, and 373 is returned here, and so on and so forth, all the way down to the bottom, one, two, three, four, five. The sum of those is 179, 179. So that's that's what it does. Um, similarly, instead of sum, I can put average in here, and that's now a rolling average, or I can put, uh, say, max, and that's a rolling max, and so on. So let's have a look at how that works. Um, let's change it back to sum because that's easier to talk about. Right, so we pass the range into x and we pass five into the window. So that's that we want to create sums of every five rows. And we pass sum as the function. The first thing that we do is create this sequence, which is the same length as the number of rows in x. So in this case, it's 13. So that's a sequence of one, from one to 13. And we're calling it underscore i. And then the return value of the let function call is this call to the map function, where we are mapping over the sequence 1 to 13, this lambda function. And the lambda function is a function of one parameter, which I've called b. b represents each element in that sequence. So the first value of b is 1, the second value is 2, the third is 3, and so on through to b equals 13. And we simply apply this very simple if statement. If b is less than window, remember in this example, we've passed five as window. So if b is less than five, return the na value. So the first four values, b is one, two, three, and four respectively, and they are all less than five. So we've returned na for the first four rows. 
which is correct because uh, this is not a rolling five row uh, window. So we can't calculate the sum and compare it in a fair way to the rest of the, the windows. If B is greater than or equal to window, we execute this expression. It looks a bit complex, but let's just take a look on the inside. Um, this expression here is building a reference and everything before the colon is the from cell. So if window is five and B is, let's say the first row here, six, six minus five plus one, six minus five is one plus one is two. So the first, um, the first reference before the colon is cell B2. And the reference after the colon where, uh, where B equals six is cell B6. So the range that is being passed into the function is B2 to B6. And if we have passed sum as the function to this inner lambda function, we're really just doing sum b2 to b6. And everybody knows how to do that. It's just sum, uh, I'll just drag it quickly, b2 to b6. So that's exactly what that is. Um, and that's just happening automatically thanks to map uh, and the, the wonder of the colon operator. So that is really how the function works. That's how rolling aggregates work. So I've just deleted that by accident. Let me get rid of this. Um, but you may be wondering, why did I bother putting the function in a separate inner lambda function? Well, um, I could have just had it as a third argument here, but uh, instead of doing that, because I recognize that sometimes I may want to produce multiple rolling statistics over the same windows, I'd like to configure the windows once. So those are my windows of five rows over that vector from B2 to B14. And now I can use reuse R because R is now a function with sum and R with average and R with min and R with max. And I can even use a custom lambda function in there. So let's say R with lambda x um, and let's use text join with comma space true and x. And what that will do, close the lambda, close R, close H stack, and close let. Uh, what that will do is it will text join the five rows leading up to and including the current row. So I've H stacked the calls to the same set of windows over and over again. Uh, and this is significantly simpler than calling rolling aggregate for each aggregate that I want to use. And that's achieved by using this currying te uh, technique. So if I press enter, now I have five sets of statistics over rolling uh, rolling windows of five rows each. So this is sum, this is average, min, max, and that weird and inexplicable text join function that I put there as an example. And that really is how it works. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.